Okay, folks, welcome. We're going to have a little video here on some of the things that we talked about and tools that you'll need for your break-even analysis problem. Um, so we'll talk about how to set up a model and then the three tools that we've used in this, the data table, the goal seek, and the scenario manager. Uh, to save a little bit of time, I've typed some things in here, and it might give you an idea of at least one way that you could set up your spreadsheet. You really have two different sections for sure. The first one, a parameters section, which is for your inputs. Um, these are the numbers that were given to you in the problem. In our problem here, we're going to talk about uh, a person who works a certain number of days per month, and they're trying to figure out how their expenses go and how much disposable income they might end up with. They certainly need to cover their expenses, but they'd like to have some extra cash too. So, I'm going to put some numbers in here. Uh, the person right now, let's say, is planning on working 21 days in the month. They work 8 hours a day, and their hourly wage is a not too impressive $12.50. Okay, um, because these numbers are given in the problem, we'd like to format them in a way that lets the user know that yeah, they can change these numbers. So I'm going to format them as I did constants in our linear programs. I'll highlight these cells, right click, go down to Format Cells, and the formatting that I always use, I'll take a border, which is of the color blue, uh, kind of a thick line, and make it go around the outside of the box. For a fill, I use a medium gray color, and that's what I ended up with there. I can do the same sort of thing, by the way, just by saying, take these cells, grab the format from them, and then put apply it to these cells too. And as you see, I just made a new box as well. It sometimes screws up a little bit. You can see the bottom border is missing, so I can just fix that. Right click. Format cells, go to the border, make it around the entire outside. Everything's great. Uh, the person that we're talking about here has a has monthly fixed expenses of eleven thousand, oh, sorry, eleven hundred dollars a month. Uh, and if they're going to go to work, they have some things that they spend some money on as well. That is, um, for example, transportation costs of getting to and from work. Maybe they have to buy lunch while they're at work, an expense that they wouldn't incur at home. So let's say that the total daily expenses that they end up having are a total of, let's say, uh, $6. Okay, So I'll put that in there too. Every day that they work, it's going to cost them 6 bucks in expenses that they can't really avoid. All right, well, those are my input values. Let's see how the model goes for a one-month period. Total monthly wages, pretty simple calculation. I'm going to take how many days I work per month and multiply it, that's asterisk in Excel, times how, much, how many hours uh, I work per day. That calculation so far tells me the total number of hours that I work in a month, and I multiply that by how much I get per hour, 1250. So this person's making 2100 bucks over the course of the month. How about expenses? Well, we know that we have these monthly fixed expenses, and that's an easy calculation because it's just right up here. Okay, it's that number there. And we also have our work, monthly work expenses. Well, here's the daily work expense up here. So to figure out the monthly work expense, I'm going to take the daily work expense and multiply it by how many days a month I work, which is there. So there's my monthly work expenses. That would generally be called variable cost in your typical break-even problem. So what's my disposable income, which in a typical problem might be corresponding to your profit? Well, the calculation is pretty easy. And you can see I've already suggested it by the calculations over here. Take my monthly wages, subtract off my monthly fixed expenses, and also subtract off my monthly work expenses. And when I do that, I end up with a disposable income of 874 bucks. That's not too bad. I've got some money left over at the end of the month that I can use. This part is the model, okay? And frankly, until you get your model working, you don't want to really spend time doing anything else because everything else we're going to be doing relies on this part, okay? So get that done first and make sure it's working. The numbers that are in the boxes up here, if you change them to new values, your calculations down here should change. One more thing to say about the model. Please note that I've actually shown some of the breakdown of how the pieces fit together, okay? I don't really want just this number right here with nothing else. I'd like to see the intermediate calculations as well. There are two reasons for that. First of all, it helps you to debug your work. Secondly, it helps me, looking at your sheet, to understand what's going on. If I'm your client, I could see how much money am I getting from, uh, how much money am I paying for, uh, sorry, how much money am I bringing in, how much am I spending, how do these things work out. I can also see I spelled, misspelled monthly, so let me fix that. You want to look over your stuff before you finish. Okay, so there's my report. Now, second thing I want to do is to see how the, uh, the this disposable income, which is what I'm mainly interested in, how it would change if I changed the number of days of work per month. Okay, In particular, I definitely have to pay my bills, but maybe I don't need to do much more than that. I'm going to do that by creating a data table. And once again, I can't do the data table until after I've gotten my model made.
but let's do a data table over here. I'm interested in figuring out, as I change the number of days of work per month, how do I change my disposable income? In fact, I'll look a little bit more than that, too. How, how do my wages change, and how does my disposable income change? To start that out, I'm going to make a column for the thing I want to change. Here it's the days of work per month. Days working per month. And I can change this column width if I want to, right, to make it a little bit more fitting. The things I'm interested in, I said I was interested in monthly wages. And I was also interested in my disposable income. Okay. Um, I should be consistent with my capitalization, by the way. You notice I'm using sentence case here, sentence case here, but cap uh, title case here. It would be better to have that I be small to be consistent. So there we go. The cell that's right underneath this first title, uh, I'm going to leave it blank. In class, I colored it with a pale blue color. You won't actually do this on what you're turning in. I'm just going to do it there to remind you where that cell is. Okay, now underneath that blank cell, we're going to put the values that we're interested in for this variable, working days per month. Um, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to say we're going to work at least five days a month. Okay, I've decided that. But I might work anything more than five, up to, let's say... 31. So I'll just put all the numbers from 5 down to 31 here. I could have typed them by hand, but it takes a little longer, so I didn't. Then what information am I interested in? Monthly wages and disposable income. I'm going to look in my model and see where those quantities appear. There's monthly wages right there. There's disposable income right there. So what I'm going to put in this cell is a pointer to where the monthly wages are. Equals, and then click on monthly wages in the model. In the same way, I'm going to go over here and say disposable income equals and point to the disposable income. Now, you'll notice right now these numbers turned up in a very faint form. That's not what will happen when you type them. They'll look like this, like any other numbers. But I've made them faint because I'm going to be creating a table here, and these pointer formulas really aren't part of the resulting table. So I highlighted them like this and said, give me a light gray color so I can see them, but I don't get confused by them. Okay? Once I do this, I want Excel to fill in this table. Let me explain what I'm telling Excel to do. I'm saying, take this first number, 5, stick it into the days per month. That will change all the numbers in this table. Write down for me what my monthly wages will be now and what my disposable income will be now. When you finish that, go to the next number on the list, 6, stick that into the days per month, recompute the whole sheet, and again, write down monthly wages and disposable income, this time in the 6 row and keep doing that all the way down the table. I'm going to be able to tell Excel to do this with one single command, and here's how you do it. Start by highlighting that, that blank cell, then highlight the entire rectangle that contains the stuff that you've typed, like that. Now we're going to go to Data, What If Analysis, and the last item, Data Table. When we do, we get this requester that doesn't make a lot of sense to me in terms of how it's written. Row input cell, column input cell. Let me remind you what's going on here. Let's start with the column input cell. What Excel is saying is this. Hey, I see you typed a whole bunch of numbers in the first column. I'll stick them into the model for you, but where do you want me to put them? What one cell is supposed to contain each of these numbers one by one? Well, these are days working per month. So I want them all to be stuck in, one by one, into this days of work per month cell. That's all that I have to tell Excel. The row input cell would say, hey, I see you typed a bunch of col or numbers across the first column, sorry, across the first row. Where do you want me to put them? The answer is wrong. I didn't type in a bunch of numbers. I typed some formulas in. And I don't want you to stick them anywhere. So I'm going to leave that row input cell empty. If these numbers that went down this column instead went across the first row, I'd be using row input cell. But that's not what I'm doing here. So instead, all I have to say is OK. And when I do that, as you can see, the entire table is now filled in. This is also a dynamic process. If it turned out, for example, that I only worked five hours per day, then the, all the numbers over here would change to reflect that fact. Okay? But in fact, I'm working eight hours a day, so we'll put it back where it was. Okay, so that's all there really is to a data table. Notice, by the way, that it is dynamic, that it does update. I happen to start my data with five here. If I put something else in, it would recompute that row. Okay? But I liked it with five.
I can see some things from this chart. For example, if I'm interested in break-even analysis, well, the equivalent of breaking even here would be having zero disposable income. 11 days of work gives me a negative disposable income. 12 days of work gives me a positive one. Somewhere between 11 and 12 is where I break even. If I can't work fractions of a day, I'd need to work 12 in order to be able to at least break even. If fractions of the day are possible, it's somewhere between 11 and 12, and we'll see that a little later. Okay, so there's our table. I'm going to get rid of the blue color in that cell there because like I told you, you wouldn't be doing that for me. It was simply so we could look at it while we were talking. If you want to make your table look a little nicer, for example, by putting a border around it, that's always a good idea. Okay, you could use some color if you wanted to and so on. Okay, so there's our table. How do I use it? Well, one way I can use it is to make a graph of what's going on here. Let's say I'm taking a graph of disposable income. I could take all the values of disposable income that I'm interested in here they all are, and say insert line graph, and there's a number of choices, but I like the ones with the little dots on them. So there we go. Now this chart needs some work. Obviously it needs a title, it needs these axes labeled and so on, but if you take a look, the horizontal axis is going from 1 to 27. It should be going from 5 to 31. That's because I didn't tell it where the horizontal axis data was coming from. To get it to understand, click on the graph, right click, say select data, and over here you'll see horizontal axis labels, say edit, and then tell them where your labels are. Here they start at 5 and go down to 31. I'll say OK, and if you take a look at my graph you'll now see that axis is properly labeled. You can also see that I cross through the zero line somewhere between 11 and 12, just like I thought. This particular graph is linear, of course. It wouldn't necessarily have to appear linear. In some cases, they might not. A, cur a, cur a graph that came out as a curve would be nonlinear. So would one that has a jump in it. So would one that had a kink in it, okay? And then frankly, in the problem I'm having you do, one of those three things would be the case. If you're doing the one about the recliners and the, um, the um, deck chairs, your graph should not come out to be quite linear. Okay, so we have the graph. That's nice. What else can we do? Well, one of the other things that you're supposed to do is to use goal seek to find out where the break-even point is. Really easy to do. Break-even with goal seek. Okay. I'm asking how many days do I have to work to make exactly zero money? Well, to get that, I'm going to click on the Excel cell where I want to put the answer. I'll go back to my data, what if analysis, goal seek, and now I'm going to say that my goal is to make this, my disposable income, equal to the number zero. That's break even. I'm going to do that by changing this cell, which is the number of days that I work. That's all that I have to do. Set this cell to zero by changing that cell. When I say OK, it does a little calculation and it says here's the answer, 10.702. And that's the number that I'd be putting in this cell, 10.702. 10 if I work 10.702 days, I just break even. Okay, And that's all that it has to say. OK so far? All right. We have one last one. Well, actually, uh, we have a couple more pieces. The next thing I asked you to do was to actually write a break-even formula. In this part, what I'm really doing is following the kind of work I did in class of saying, take all the money coming in, set it equal to all the money going out, and then solve for the number of units that you have to have to make that work. Here are the units that I have. It's not a, a product being produced, but a number of days of working. So, I could go through the mathematics of it, but all I'm going to be doing is saying total month in, write that as an expression, it's going to be how many, let's go back and put this back to 21 where it was, total, total money in is going to be how many days I work per month, times hours per day, times hourly wage, total money going out, my fixed expenses, and whatever monthly expenses I have here. I'm going to have an equation I'll write on a piece of paper. I'm going to have those two being equal, and then I'm going to solve it for the number of days of work per month. This video is getting kind of long, so let's make another one where we'll look at the break-even formula and at uh, doing the scenario manager. So please go to the other video. Thanks a lot.